I'm Sudeshna from Mark Business Transformation. We, in our series of webcast insights, that is know today and lead tomorrow, we are inviting various eminent leaders from the industry who will speak to us about people and change. Today, I'm delighted to have Mr. Amit Kaul uh, with us. Mr. Amit heads the HR at Opal currently, and he's heading strategy, culture, and HR here at Opal. He's from ONGC and he has like has worked in various areas of industrial relations, talent development, uh, training, training and development, as well as uh, employee engagement. With his 24 years of experience, he aims to build an inclusive work environment. People, helm of everything we do. And for, for Mr. Amit, his passion is to get the HR aligned to the business. And that's something like, you know, at one shot, we can get employee engagement and business goals achieved. So with that, welcome to, welcome Mr. Ramit. Thank you, ma'am. It's a pleasure to be interacting with you on this medium and uh, look forward to have an engaging session with you here. So thank you for this. Okay, so going directly with like something which is stemming from your passion, as uh, uh, we say sometimes, HR being a super function. But now, like, you know, trying to bring business, uh, we weaving various departments, the role of HR in organizations, in making organizations succeed. So how, how do you think HR manages that role? See, by virtue, traditionally also, by virtue of the requirements of HR, whether, I mean, all aspects of the talent, right, from sourcing to, to its development and retention. And uh, HR, I would say, is one function that has to, by virtue of its basic role, interact with everyone, with all the departments, uh, in order to devise the strategies for sourcing, for retaining, for developing, with the top management in order to understand the business plans, like what the plans are, and then devise strategies, HR strategies, whether it's performance management, whether it's sourcing and all. And then with the people also, various groups, individuals across functions. So HR is uniquely placed in an organization other than operations, marketing, finance, who are all working. There might be inter-department collaborations. But the essence of working for HR is inter-departmental. Uh, I mean, it, it, it is the only function which works with all the departments all the time. So it has, I won't say so much in the past, but gradually over the years, it has used that role to to be the strategic partner, which is a very oft-repeated term. And that gives HR the advantage, you know, to, to, to lead the strategy along with the, with the top uh, leader of the company. So that is something that the HR leaders and the HR team members should be increasingly aware of in the current context. They should understand their role apart from the routine things, which they're doing to every day. They have to be part of the strategic role, it, it will create a winning advantage for the organization and it will create a winning advantage for the people of the organization where they are. So that is my understanding. Uh, great. I mean, what, I, what I'm hearing from you is, yes, it, there is a lot of transactional uh, role which HR, uh, you know, traditionally may have played or playing, but the importance of it being able to weave the whole organization, it should take advantage of that and be in that driver position where it is a part of the strategy. So so, so great to hear that from you. And uh, do you think uh, how important would be an organization culture to support? It? Do you think all, that all organizations support this kind of uh, culture or the culture? How, how What is your take on culture of the organization? Oh, again, like culture is something which is very inherent uh, and very uh, deep rooted within each and every organization. It is not something which is written on a paperboard or on the walls of the company. Okay, you may have the value statements and everything, but culture is something that evolves over time. It is embedded in, in each and every company without you knowing it or not. And what shapes the culture? 
the way it is generally top driven, the way your leaders articulate the, the requirements of the company, how they walk the talk, what behaviors they practice, are they ethical, are they dynamic? So are they collaborative? Are they communicative? So on these principles, and then gradually it, it percolates, the people understand, the people who are coming into the organization, they gradually get a feel what the culture of the company is about. The culture of many companies is written about. Many companies you hear, like a company is known for its very high ethical standards. Another company is known for very quick decision making. So the culture is something that defines a company. It's very important, but it is not, it is something so. So what is the importance? It's very important for HR and the top leadership to consciously build a culture that really supports and promotes a very sustainable business. See, a business, it's very important. Many times we do, many, many people, many leaders tend to sacrifice long-term sustainability or short-term goals, short-term success, short-term wins. They're very important. But now, uh, in the current context, it's very important that we, as HR and the business mm-hmm. leaders together, build a culture which is which promotes sustainable organization, which uh, really involves the employees to to contribute to the organization, to stay with the organization, and to promote a long term win uh, situation, win win. I will say for the employees, the organization, the customers, everyone. So that is the importance of culture. If you consciously try to build it, it's a great thing. Mm. Even if you don't try to build it, it will be formed. So it's better yes. you try to build you, it. That's, that's a very nice way to put it. Yes, what leaders do is going to kind of viewed as what they are experiencing the organization. But yeah, if something is working, some we should conscious be very conscious at what really helps and what is kind of not uh, helping anymore. So that's, that's a very good way of looking at it. So as of now, you are leading the HR culture of a, of, of a large petrochem project. We can talk about that. Right. So, so from here, uh, like how how do you experience your role in this organization? See, it's very important. It's been not too many uh, months since I joined here. But uh, you get to feel uh, uh, the culture gets uh, depicted in the behaviors of the people, how we are transacting informally, formally within within departments, with intra departments, and all. So when I came, uh, there was an overwhelming <coughs> sense of there was a. It was not the best of times for the company. Almost every day, an employee was leaving the company. I mean, that was an average. So thirty people uh, leaving th- that was happening in the current fiscal. So it became very important to understand, especially for a newcomer like me, uh, totally alien to the culture. So it was very important to understand. So that was done through communication, communication through town hall meetings, through surveys, immediately surveys, and then one-on-one interactions, meeting with the key stakeholders, the focus groups, focus group discussions and all. So to get an understanding, I'm just digressing a bit. I mean, just talking about the uh, how I understood the pulse of the company in, in a short time. So when you understand, you you when you try to communicate, you get a feeling like what are the issues? How are people behaving? How are people reacting? And what is the basic uh, ways things get done here? That's what culture is about. I mean, the standard accepted unwritten norms, things are done. Here. So you got to feel the predominant theme I got from here was that people were despondent. There were certain things uh, macro outside the organization, like we all operate in an ecosystem. So the ecosystem currently uh, was challenging uh, for the company. But that, instead of uh, making the employees resilient, was making them despondent. So so we, uh, so of course we did several uh, things I'll talk about it later, but coming to the culture part, like to drive home the fact that the company is, the management is committed to, yeah. to, to the 
to the purpose with which the company has been set, and the vision, the mission, and to its people. So that message had to be sent to the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, that message we could communicate through initiatives, which I'll be talking about later. But we saw that the way people started behaving, I mean, it is, it is not something that I'm saying, like, got so much of feedback that people come up and they say that we feel so much more motivated. We feel to really work to align ourselves with the purpose of the company and give it our best. And no matter what the outside environment is, we will stick it out. We will give our best and uh, we'll go with the, uh, with the company uh, goals and objectives. So that is one thing where, where people, their perceptions change when they, when they know that, uh, that management is empathetic. As I, tell my uh, colleagues in uh, my HR team, like, give uh, uh, an ounce of empathy to your people, just hear them out, and they will give you back a ton of uh, commitment and uh, performance. So if you're willing to, to give that uh, ear to the people to understand them, they will get aligned, and they will reinforce the culture that you want to establish in the company. So that alignment with the uh, company, the, the top, uh, uh, the, the desired culture, which the management wants, will come mm -hmm. from the people. Ultimately, it comes right from all the levels. So it can be ensured if the management on its part shows that it's a caring management, it is an empathetic management, and it acts on, on their aspirations to make their experience better. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, uh, what you are again, I'm just uh, kind of trying to paraphrase it, is that uh, like the commitment or the intent of the leaders were there. But we at uh, like, we you know, sometimes we get so much caught up in doing our daily stuff that doesn't get emphasized or re-emphasized as very articulated completely. Like, this is what we are. This is what we expect to get that engagement from the people, making them maybe how like making them feel that they are a part of it. So that's what kind of, you know, the initiative which you, you all did is what I'm hearing. Yeah. So, uh, so in this organization or in general for, uh, you know, for, for an organization to be future ready, what steps would you take in the sense of, you know, making the organization achieve its goals in terms of people, what would be like, you know, uh, as a HR function, you would like to step up things. See, uh, <clears throat> this, uh, this trend of being future ready, that's always true. I mean, these days we hear a lot of it. Uh, that's very important to be future ready. It was always important to be future ready. So you, you got to know where you currently are, where you want to be in future. What are the problems? What are the challenges? What are the issues that are preventing you from attaining that desired state in the future? And uh, yeah, there are uh, a lot of forces in the environment which you can't predict. I mean, there is so much mm -hmm. of volatility. Like you had in 2020, you had the COVID. Who had predicted? Yeah. Uh, you had the, uh, the big recession uh, in the first uh, decade of the new millennium. So how to be ready for the unexpected mm -hmm. that agility has to be there so future can never be envisioned but the ability right through from the top to the bottom to respond to act in unison to understand that the situations some such extraordinary situations demand extraordinary uh, efforts so that understanding is very important in the company to be percolated from the top to the bottom. And if that understanding is there in all the groups, departments, people, units, dads, triads, you're future ready. That's my take on this. I, I think very well put. Yeah, I, I think we talk more future ready because nowadays the future is too current. Meaning it because the changes maybe are are too frequent as or enterprise wide felt. So I guess the like that term terminology has come into the future ready, but it is something very imminent now we can see. And uh, 
how important do you think leaders role is in this how, how how important is the leadership should in building a good leadership team in an organization to get that going see uh, leadership is is the most important thing an organization with a good leadership will always be the winning organization that's i mean there there just cannot be any two uh, issues about that so we all talk about leadership styles you, uh, i mean what leadership style you should be whether you're authoritative whether you're pace setting whether you're uh, participative whether you're democratic whether you're coercive so different situations different uh, as uh, i mean making a cricket simile or a metaphor like different pitches your approaches have to change so in different times but the leader has to have the foresight has to have the foresight to understand what approach is required in a given situation and one situation doesn't present itself at a given time at a given time various units may be facing different situations so to deal with the different people under him in different ways that is the essence that is the requirement of the new age leader i mean he has to understand like with in this situation with this sort of people whether they are customers whether they are stakeholders whether they are your own employees this is my behavior i have to be coercive something important drastic needs to be done so it is to be my way or the highway but in other ways like if you want a, a longer a very sustainable thing to be happening so you got to be participative take in the views if you have the luxury of time build consensus and go ahead if you and you have to have some attributes of yourself i mean if situations demand that you just articulate your vision and let the people do the work then be the authoritarian leader similarly pace setting all that i mean these terms which have been defined they really need to be practiced and if they practiced in the correct measure that that's the job of the leader to understand situations and act accordingly and of course basic things vision inspiring being humble being empathetic all these are traits attributes what do we call that they have to be there but the approaches that are talked about they are very very much required so uh, when we talk about an organization's vision mission we we talk about uh, overtly we see results we overtly see where they want to go in the next but uh, do you do you think uh, the, the 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 vision mission can be without the people so uh, how how important it is to take the people along it is very important that the os vision and mission are achieved through people so 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 in that respect uh, in terms of leadership do you see the change of making like you know people attributes because uh, some years back we used to see send them to training happened when a customer complaint happens not before that you do not realize the importance of developing people before that uh, when a leader goes and nobody is there and then people are thinking of succession planning but in, what i'm trying to see is developing people how important it is to leadership karan do they find a place in the vision mission yes uh, it's very important no organization can can sustain or excel without an eye for people development that's very important and has to be done that's i mean it need not be stated by me or you it's it's a known fact it has to be accepted or adopted and uh, one thing you made at the start of uh, this part of conversation was that uh, the role of people in creating the vision it's very important like if a vision is is thrust from the top uh basically it will not even be understood we will only be accepted and adopted and you know they being part of the to drive it but if it is co created if the people understand mm-hmm. what what are uh, what the bosses are saying what the top leadership is saying if they understand so at the time of creating a vision if that buy in happens at that very time if such vision if this is the way a vision is created my personal experience of organizations with which i have worked with which i have seen from close quarters those are the organizations that uh, they beat the competition and they survive and they thrive in the long run 
So a vision co-created, co-developed with the people, that is the vision that sustains and produces the results. And that is a vision which is attained. Okay. And uh, like from there, I would say, what are the key challenges you see of leaders today, which you feel as HR, you should be kind of, you know, you have a role in kind of making them, you know, cope up with those challenges. So this has been, uh, I mean, the times are getting challenging and tougher by the day, like in terms of, uh, if we if we look at the, the changes in the macro level, the geopolitics and all, uh, they're they're so tectonic, you, you've never seen. And then, and then black swan events would come like a COVID came. So uh, people uh, also who form a key component of the organization, like, issues like new generations, new aspirations, remote mm -hmm. working, and uh, uh, quiet quit quitting, and all these things that we heard. So these are uh, challenges that the leaders are facing. Mm -hmm. And HR, as I said earlier, being, I mean, HR has to, I mean, it's not that something comes naturally to you, you have to make an effort. So HR has to understand the business, has to understand it's, it's very important like you have to hr cannot be seated and doing just uh, the conventional roles training and uh, sitting in uh, uh, you know cocoons doing the recruitment doing the training they have to understand even the people at the bottom of my team has to understand the connect has to see the line of sight between what the company aspires and what the activity which he finds you know routine what value that activity is adding to to the goals of the organization. So that, that is the role of HR head to make his people first in the HR department realize like what the line of sight is. Similarly, make the top leadership whether uh, the people are heading the finance function, the marketing function, uh, make them understand uh, the bigger picture, the importance of collaboration and uh, work out uh, measures to, to cope up with the uncertainty and the volatility. So that is the role mm -hmm. of HR. It is, again, very collaborative, very co collaborative. But then first, you have to get involved in the scheme of things, understand business, because HR naturally is not positioned to understand the business. You have to make an effort to understand the business, the operations, how, how the marketing team is working, how the, what the finances are, what the operations are. What are the challenges at the plant level, the shop floor level? So that understanding is, is very important. Then only you can, you know, tell your leaders, hey, you've got to do this. First, understand to be, to be understood. That's very important. So it's a process. HR has to yes. do it. And that needs to be done. I guess, I guess, yes. Then they can really add value and partner with the business. Uh, Nowadays, we see a lot of quick fixes being put. So, like you, you had this retention challenge. We are seeing other organizations are also having retention challenges or you know people challenges as such. Uh, what trend we usually see are quick fixes, like you know small things, like you know do some training, make the, the send them to kind of some kind of a motivation workshop or something like that. But do do you think that you know that kind of what is a, what are the things you would like to do on a sustainable basis for any challenge, not only retention as such, but you can pick up any challenge and say what are the ways and means which you would address it to be a little long term and sustainable. Uh, you're very right. Like uh, quick fixes are required in certain situations. I mean, the long term approach is the best approach. It's the sustainable approach. But there are times uh, at the times of crisis, you have to apply the bad bit. Okay. So that's very important. Like here, as I told you, when I joined here, people, I mean, leaving the door every day, one person leaving the door in a company of 900 or like in a matter of a couple of years, the, the company would, the shelf would be empty. So you have to understand what is required and give that quick fix. In our case, specific to Opal here, uh, we, we did a quick, like within a week of my joining, we did a pulse survey. We saw, we, it was a direct question that we asked, like, why, what is the reason you think your colleagues are leaving? And of course we knew it, but we just wanted that endorsement. So the endorsement that we got is that 
uh, it's the low uh, compensation that's there compared to the market. So that's why people are leaving. So with that, armed with that knowledge, I mean, we, we know here currently the financials of the company are a bit tight. They're challenging. Any organization can go through that. So we could convince our board to give an interim relief to our people and ad hoc relief of maybe a certain percentage of the CTC. And uh, that has really worked wonders. Like, believe you me, like the, the proposal had gone to the board several times. But that conviction maybe would have been lacking. We could convince the board. Ultimately, the board has the best interest of the company in mind. So that conviction is required on the part of HR to make the board uh, appreciate why a quick fix is required. In our case, we were successful and uh, we immediately uh, communicated and implemented the decision for an ad hoc relief. And it has worked wonders besides improving the morale, motivation, but what has, in terms of tangibles, what we've got, like 30 people leaving every day in the month of September, no one has left. Six people have taken their resignations back. So that is the tangible. So that is something that makes you feel very content, satisfied. Yes, the band-aid that you applied is, is, is very important. Otherwise, the blood would have flown at a rate which would have been very difficult to uh, sustain later. But coming to the broader picture, yes, quick fixes are required, but those are required in crisis, in situations where you have to act fast and do it and move ahead. But you cannot be complacent every day, every day, every week, every month. Please understand the, the environment where your employees are. Try to understand your employees, try to understand their aspirations. And as you said, you know, don't give them quick fixes like sending them to a training. Make them confident that the company cares for them for their career goal. That the performance management is going to be objective. That the the perks, the benefits are going to be. I see a lot of uh, hard burning people with the if there is no internal equity, forget the external uh, comparison. If mm -hmm. they see people doing similar roles, roles. getting mm -hmm. different pay, so mm -hmm. that is a big, big turn off for the employees. So create that environment, perform those functions which make the employees believe, yes, the management, the HR believes in equity, whether it is assessing your performance, whether it is advancing your career, whether it is giving you learning opportunities or whether it is mm -hmm. compensation, everywhere the organization is equitable, it's fair, it's just. So that is the long-term feeling, that is the long-term mission with which HR needs to work. Yeah, I hope everybody thought like you. I mean, sometimes we, like, you know, we just kind of in the learning business, we are kind of trying, to, we, are, we don't see this, you know, very often that, you know, uh, like the quick fixes sometimes, hey, it was the wins are big, so let's move on. And that happens, but you need to kind of, you know, after that, what, you know, the band-aid, the, the, meaning that the wound has to be complete. Not to rest on that, to, to understand that it is only the long matters but sometimes yes yeah. quick fixes need to be fixes. absolutely so coming to coming to amit now like you know what has been your biggest learning or a wow moment if we say like you know has been in your life which you consider that that learning kind of kind of being helped you through or whatever you would like to share Personally, like uh, I, I was working with ONGC and right now I'm with the joint venture company of ONGC. So being, I've been personally very committed to work and I think that a wow moment doesn't happen on a particular day. I mean, it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a big bash event. Life is not a big bash event and a wow moment will come with, a, uh, with an unknown top rated celebrity and gate crashing the party and performing there. No. I think wow moments, as I said, uh, currently uh, what I'm going through, like seeing the people, seeing the, seeing the response, seeing the, seeing the happiness of the people, which is so genuine and it is so honest when, when they interact with you, with a hope, with a purpose that 
they they have so much faith on the hr leader of the company so honestly that is a wow moment for me currently i am living through that, that wow moment when i see that my people are believing so much in the hr team are believing so much in the leadership that we have given so that is something and when you see so much of hope trust and uh, faith in you as for the role that you're performing i tell you there can be nothing more satisfying and more fulfilling than that so so i'm living a wow moment every day of <laughs> cool i mean that's like you know uh, I, I, and you can see the you know the needle move i mean you're able to do things which is making the needle move and it's good to see those measures and so those metrics to to show that yeah whatever we are doing is having an impact on the people so uh then what according to you would be you would say the five biggest capabilities i'm not adding a number any the biggest capability or asset in today's organizations in terms of mindset of any organization irrespective of any sector i would say but today's leaders to succeed today's organizations to succeed what are the biggest capabilities they should be having i would say <coughs> sorry i'd say in the current <coughs> scenario a leaders should have an uncanny ability to to envision the future to envision uh what is going to happen i mean they have to be almost like clairvoyants to they, they have to have that supernatural ability what's going to happen i mean that intuition has to be there that is very important for a leader to succeed and then of course a decision making which is very objective which is firm and which is implementable i mean if you take a decision and you are not able to see it through so that is very important so an uncanny ability to envision take the decision and lead the change lead your people be with the people if you are not a people leader i tell you i mean you just cannot Uh, operate in a vacuum you can't be seated in an ivory tower if you're not meeting the people making them understand what you see what you feel is is the best for the company and in fact as i said co creating that uh, actions which are required so you have to be a people's man people's woman whatever you say as a leader you need to be a people's leader that is also very important too and then have uh, when when you've done that also it's very important to reward your people to to celebrate wins if 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 you don't make, make people realize uh, that something great for the company is something great for them also so that is very important i mean if you just walk away okay fine thank you you've done it no you have to elevate the people you have to bring them to the platform where they understand that they gave something which they were not giving earlier so that elevation of people that reward recognition in unconventional measure has to be done so these are the four things i see you asked for five i gave only four <laughs> it's fine i think you covered the yeah. any five meaning it will be covered here like i mean i mean all i mean all smiles talking to you because you know like this kind of a vision and for uh, an organization so in terms of an organization how do you think Uh, opal is different from the other conventional uh, petrochem uh, sector no in terms of technology uh, uh, as i said like the technology that comes to opal is a dual uh, feed cracker unit like uh, the the feed is both liquid and gaseous so it's very technologically advanced and it's a new uh, company relatively of course many of the best the petrochem se- sector are new Uh, it's a single plant uh, company, and uh, uh, it's uh, as I said, the the plant, the technology being used, the product that's coming out from here is perhaps it's universally acknowledged. It's the best product that we get in the country. It's being exported a bit as well. So the plant technology, the product, this is all world class. But what I understand in my short stint in Opal. what i did not even see in my uh, parent company the ondc the i see a unique unimaginable attachment of the people to their company because the plant has been commissioned just for 5 6 years back so that uniqueness i mean 
I have met in my career a lot of people across organizations. But here, all, even when people were leaving, I mean, even then, you could feel it. It was so palpable. They were genuinely sad. That ownership attachment, I, I am yet to understand. I'm still understanding where does it stem for, from? So that's yeah. amazing how it has been built into the culture and how it has been built into the culture of Opal and how the people are so impacted. The people here, I find, are amazing. So much of involvement, commitment to the cause of the organization. Well, so I see a very bright future for Opal. I mean, if you have people like this who, who, who really feel for the organization, the, the task of the leaders becomes that much more easier. Okay. So as an HR leader, uh, uh, what, what would you like to share your doing or did, which would be best practices to others, which would be something which others can, uh, you know, see their uh, lead the tomorrow with? No, well, uh, I'm sure all the HR leaders all across and around are doing great. And uh, But as an HR leader here, I would say it's very important to communicate with your people, whether it is your stakeholders internal external stakeholders try to build a, a network uh, try to collaborate with your with your top management with your whether it's right up to the board uh, try to have a connect with the people whether it is the lowest employee at the shop floor level who's working a blue collar worker whether it is the board whether it is your colleagues your peers uh, be totally seamless humble that's very important. Don't don't you know have that air or acquire that air that I'm I'm on a pedestal. I understand things better, or I can give you better. No, you are placed in an organization. Uh, be be thankful that you placed in an organization to impact the organization in a real important way. So uh, it's very important to communicate. That's very important. Communication is the key. Second, again, as I said. Two for the leaders, like be able to understand what's coming two months down the line, four months down the line. Just have that vision foresight to understand what's coming and be prepared for it. Before it comes, be prepared for what is coming. That's very important. Right. And uh, rest, I would say, yeah, be be honest, upright, ethical. I mean, personally, I have viewed integrity and ethical behavior as the cornerstone of my professional uh, journey. So always believe in that and always stand by it. And uh, it's very important as an HR leader, you to walk the talk. You have to be fair. You have to be equitable. I mean, you can't be speaking something and doing something else. That's very important. So walking the talk, HR should be doing it. I mean, others, they can afford to be a bit lax on it. But for HR, you have to do it. I, I agree. I mean, the HR leader walking the talk and showing everybody. And I think uh, uh, you, 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 we are doing a wonderful job here. Uh, and uh, it's so good to hear all these things from you. Mm -hmm.